my name is Hakeem Butler. Thanks, and, thanks for being here. And I'm uh, Kendra McCray. Thank you. Thanks, thanks, thanks for being here. And I'm with Close the Keep Creek Cramp Campaign. And um, I would like to know a little bit about you. Uh, tell us about, a little bit about yourself. Sure. I was born and raised in Philadelphia, West Philadelphia. My father was a Presbyterian minister. Mm -hmm. My mom, a Philadelphia school teacher. When I was four years old, my dad left. He struggled with substance abuse mm -hmm. issues. My mom raised my three sisters and myself, so instead of us becoming a statistic, we uh, survived. She went back to school, she got her master's and her doctorate in education, early education. Um, I attended Masterman Public School from 5th through 12th grade, Temple University for my undergraduate studies in criminal law, and St. Louis University for my legal studies. When I came back, I practiced employment discrimination and civil rights law. 2000, I embarked on a 14-year career with the Philadelphia District Attorney's Office. I prosecuted hundreds of cases, preliminary hearings, bench trials, mm -hmm. misdemeanor trials, jury trials. I represented people from all walks of life. Mm -hmm. When I left the DA's office, I opened up my own firm, and that's where I've been for the last three years, once again representing people from all walks of life, but those who have fallen mm -hmm. on the wrong side of the law. Right, that's an interesting journey, yes. and it's, it's a positive one. And um, what 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 makes you want to be a judge? Like, what? I like helping people, and I help people on a case by case basis. Right now, I'm not your typical defense attorney. I don't just usher mm -hmm. you through the system at 1301 Filbert Street, mm -hmm. but I try to help you. So if you need to have your high school diploma, I will help you get enrolled in a GED course. If okay. you need vocational training or need a job, I have contacts at CareerLink so that you can have something to contribute to society versus just going back to mm -hmm. a life of crime. I've been doing that okay. for three years. I enjoy doing it, but I want to help people on a larger scale right now. Oh, that's good. And, and um, what are your position on, on, on neglected and at-risk youth and children? And in Philadelphia? Well, neglected and at-risk youth of children in Philadelphia is, is a problem. There are too many young people having babies and not taking care of them, and it's not even young people, it's older people as well, and the kids suffer. Um, what bothers me is the fact that we have a system in place which is DHS but DHS is letting too many kids fall through the cracks. Mm -hmm. uh, they end up in family court or they end up in the adult system and they're treated as adults even though they're juvenile offenders. Mm -hmm. A lot of that could have been avoided if there had been a lack of neglect inside of the household. Um, I know for me personally, I was a foster mom for four sisters uh, back in 2007, the mom's home was uh, raided and there were drugs in the home and the kids were taken out of the home and wanted to come live with me. Mm -hmm. I was their foster parent for approximately one year and I was able to help them not become statistics. Oh, that's great. And what is restorative justice to you? Restorative justice to me would be justice treating everybody equally, with respect, with dignity, um, taking away some of the retribution in the system and replacing it with rehabilitation, working with the offender, um, trying to, to make it so that they, you know, have a chance so we're not just mm -hmm. throwing away another human being because of a crime that they've committed. Mm -hmm. So I think that would be restorative justice. Okay. And um, when you think about people who commit crimes and that they have felt like have mental illnesses and stuff like that, and for that, for that treatment before they go to trial and stuff like that to assess whether they need help or whether they need punishment. Uh, on the flip side of that question, cops that do bad things, is it a, <clears throat> anything in place to see, do they have mental problems and stuff like that or bipolar? And because that's something that I think you know, we should look at too as a society. I, I totally agree with you. Uh, I slipped at a seminar or at a meet the candidate night the other night 
and I said that I believe that anybody who possesses a firearm should have a psychiatric examination, and that includes Philadelphia police officers. A gun is a deadly weapon that is capable of vanishing someone's life and taking it away. And if you are going to pick up a gun, you need to be checked to make sure you're not schizophrenic, you're not suffering from severe depression, or even a mild depression, anxiety, anything that could cause you to pull that trigger prematurely. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, there are nothing, there's nothing in place no for police officers and members of law enforcement at this time. They do have an examination when they're in the police academy, but if they've been on the force for a decade or mm -hmm. so, they're never re-examined to the best okay. of my understanding. All right. And one last question. <clears throat> I'm a returning citizen. I did 16 years in prison. Um, and a lot of us come home, it's, it's hard to find housing, jobs, careers, and et cetera. Um, my question is a question of fairness as a judge. When returning citizens come home, if they do something bad, they get punished for it. If they do something good and, be, and become law-abiding, respectful citizens and responsible adults, can it be a, an incentive in place, a positive reinforcement to where they come home with long tails can they get some of their tells? Would you support an idea or a policy to where some of their tells can get chopped behind their good deeds and their good works as if they will get punished if they do bad, but not rewarded if they do good? And the so, question of fairness. So I'm presuming you're talking about when you say tales, probation and parole tales. Yes. When person comes out of being incarcerated, yes, I do strongly believe in um, an enrichment or an enhancement type of incentive if the person is performing they're working they're coming back with negative drug and alcohol um, urinalysis they are remaining arrest free uh -huh. they're complying with all rules and regulations then they should be cut a break and rewarded by having their parole or probation period shortened uh -huh. studies have shown long parole and probation periods are ineffective if an offender is going to reoffend, they are likely to do it within the first year or two after being sentenced. They are not likely to do it eight or nine or ten years down the road, and it sets an offender up for failure. Uh -huh. so Any other last thoughts that you would like to, um, the people to, to know about you? Anything you want to share? Uh, just that I love this city. I'm 51 years old. I was born and raised here. I'm raising my son here. And, and I am honest, I believe in justice for all, and I want you to vote for me, vote for Kendra McRae, button number 16, like sweet 16, on May 21st. Thank you. Thank you.